put tens of millions of gallons of highly radioactive waste, the Savannah River site in South Carolina has become America's de facto nuclear waste dump. The Department of Energy has spent billions of taxpayers' dollars trying to clean it up, but it still sits in deteriorating buildings and tanks beneath the surface of the swamp, posing a threat to people and the environment. Take a look around Aiken, South Carolina, and it will appear like any other well-heeled, flourishing southern town. Well-to-do retirees, golf courses, horse training tracks, and southern charm are plentiful. However, what you can't immediately see is that the most radioactive site in the United States, and possibly the world, is only 18 miles down the road. The Savannah River site is 300 square miles, making it bigger than Washington, D.C. and its suburbs combined. It is a maze of miles of radioactive underground pipes and tanks filled to the brim with several generations of the most dangerous substances on Earth. Located on the Savannah River not far from Augusta, Georgia, the site is home to five shuttered nuclear reactors and two huge radiological separation plants. All of them feed into the rusting tank and plumbing system. This flows into 49 nuclear waste tanks, brimming with tens of millions of gallons of dangerous radioactive material. What good is it to protect ourselves with nuclear weapons if we poison our people in the process? It all began in the 1950s during the Cold War. The Savannah River site was open to produce nuclear weapons. Nuclear reactors created large quantities of plutonium and tritium for the hydrogen bomb. Over 60 years later, the repercussions of these actions are being felt more than ever. It just is a current day representation of bad decisions made during the Cold War. And the mentality then was we're going to dump the waste and deal with it later. And later has arrived and now we realize a lot of mistakes were made in fighting a cold war that I would question made the world more secure. About 50 million gallons of liquid nuclear waste from the reactors are buried underground in what are called tank farms. Each of the 51 tanks is the size of an NBA professional basketball court. These turned out to be only a temporary fix to a permanent problem. There's an age for children when you can take a toy and hide it behind your back and for all intents and purposes uh, the child thinks that the toy has disappeared and that's pretty much the way the Department of Energy scientists and engineers operated so when they stuck it in the ground they had never any intentions of pulling that stuff back out they thought the deal was done now, little did they know the fortunes the, the great wealth of this country that would be expended on correcting those mistakes of theirs the tanks have started showing obvious signs of wear and have begun to wreak havoc on the surrounding area. The harsh properties of the chemicals and radioactive material in the tanks have broken down the carbon steel. Twelve of the 49 open tanks are known to have leaks. They're the high-level waste tanks themselves, which are getting older, and there's cracks in them. They need to get the waste out as quick as they can or transferred to tanks that are not leaking. And because there's potential for, for big leaks in older tanks. Transferring the waste out of the tanks to close them is not as simple as it may sound. The tanks contain two different forms of liquid nuclear waste. 10% of the volume is a sludge form, which accounts for half of the radioactivity. The other 90% of the tank's volume is a salt form. These two types of waste must be processed separately to remove them from the tank. Savannah River Remediation Spokesman Dean Campbell says their main goal is to immobilize the waste for safe long-term storage. To do this, the more radioactive sludge form undergoes glass vitrification. This slow process turns the high-level waste into solid glass canisters, which are then buried in stainless steel containers in the ground. The Defense Waste Processing Facility at the Savannah River site was opened in 1996 for this purpose. The U.S. Department of Energy says they hope to produce 7,500 glass canisters by 2025, but they have yet to make serious headway on this goal. It takes three to four months alone to prepare the sludge for the vitrification process. The sludge is combined with other liquid industrial waste from the old and current nuclear weapons processes to create a slurry. This mixture must contain a specific level of radioactivity for it to be processed correctly in the Defense Waste Processing Facility. The DWPF has a bunch of chemical parameters that have to be met to make good glass. We do what it takes here to get it in that condition. And then they do more of that when it gets over there. Once the waste mixture is ready, 7,000 gallon mini batches are sent to DWPF. Only one or two of these transfers can be made per week. 
At the facility, the waste is combined with borosilicate glass and sent to a 65-ton melter. Now that melter is heated to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, and from that, um, you get that molten glass. It's poured into canisters that look like this. The glass is poured into the 10 foot by 2 foot canisters as a thin stream. This takes an entire day. Once it is cooled and hardened, it is moved using a vehicle that looks like it was borrowed from the movie Transformers. This vehicle transports the 5,000 pound canisters to the glass waste storage buildings, where they are buried 14 feet underground. Even though the football field size storage buildings are only meant to be the canisters' temporary home, an additional building is under construction. The canisters are eventually supposed to end up at a permanent repository site, but the plans to use Yucca Mountain, Nevada for this purpose were stopped by the Obama administration. The Savannah River site is now storing the high-level nuclear waste on site. When Yucca Mountain was declared not satisfactory because it didn't meet the geologic criteria. Until a nuclear waste repository is established, the glass canisters will continue filling the already polluted swampy ground of the Savannah River site. The salt form in the tanks undergoes its own treatment process. That decontaminated salt solution has all those bad actors removed down to a very minimal level. That then is piped over to our salt waste, excuse me, our salt stone processing facility where it's basically, as we talked about lunch, it's incorporated in a grout matrix pumped into vaults for disposal. It's disposed as low level waste in those vaults because we've removed all the bad actors that came from the high level waste. The problem is the high capacity salt waste processing facility is not yet operational and won't be for at least one more year. Getting SWPF through its testing phase has been a nightmare for Savannah River site management. Radiation levels are much higher than anticipated in the salt stone complexes. Other facilities are being used, but they can only process a small amount of waste at a time. This makes it more difficult to close the tanks efficiently. Closure of the high level waste tanks in Savannah River means they, to meet the law, they have to get as much waste as uh, practical out of the tanks and I think it's called the maximum extent practical. What, what is that, in a scientific basis, what does that mean? If they go down and scrape, scrape up part of the waste, but it becomes very expensive to get a little bit more waste, they may stop and say, we've got all the waste that's practical. But what does closure of the tanks mean? It means they basically fill them with concrete. Different kinds of concrete, but they put a harder cap at the top of the tank, and when they fill, there's two tank farms that received with about 25 tank, tanks in each of these Yeah, F and H, right? They're basically just going to fill these tanks up, cap it over, leave it for infinity. But the waste cannot be left for infinity with this process. It is impossible to lessen the radioactivity of nuclear waste. It can only be isolated until it decays, which takes thousands of years. The radioactivity will break down the concrete as well as the glass canisters before this happens. And they aren't any closer that I can see to making any headway on what to do with it. Because the truth is, there is no way to deal with things that you create that are deadly and toxic for thousands of years. Although all of the 51 tanks are supposed to be emptied by 2030, only two have been closed in the past 20 years. Plus, the plant's nuclear canyons continue to move more and more waste into the tanks. Billions of taxpayers' dollars by means of stimulus funding have gone toward this, so far, unsuccessful initiative. The Department of Energy has this phenomenally high rate of project failure. The longer the radioactive waste sits in the deteriorating tanks, the more likely it is to seep into the ground and cause extreme environmental damage. Downstream there's drinking water. The city of Savannah is downstream. I, 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 when I worked for another organization 15 years ago, we conducted survey in the mouth of the Savannah River, down over 100 miles downstream. Materials are detectable in the, radioactive materials are detectable in the port of Savannah in the mud. So there's drinking water withdrawal downriver for the city of Savannah uh, suburbs. So things leaking from the Savannah River site pose a health risk. And there, there's stuff re released into the atmosphere as well. Tank leakage could expose humans, animals, and plants to dangerous radiation. And if you were to take a cup of waste, of these wastes, of the salt, let's say, in particular, then just to scoop it from the top, which you couldn't do. But if you were able to do that, and if you were to put this in a restaurant, a crowded restaurant, during noontime, oh, within a matter of minutes, people will receive lethal doses. That's how dangerous this stuff is. This could be especially harmful if a hydrogen bubble causes a tank to explode. This is what happened during the Fukushima nuclear disaster last year.
So there's hydrogen buildup in these tanks on a day-to-day -day basis that has to be swept out, blown out, uh, to keep these tanks in a safe condition. Another safety risk is the location of the Savannah River site. It sits on the Charleston Earthquake Fault. A simple earthquake could spell devastation for the area if it caused one or more tanks to explode should hydrogen build up in the tanks. The Department of Energy and its National Nuclear Security Administration seem to have a long way to go to clean up the tanks. But the NNSA, in charge of all nuclear weapons production, is still running radioactive material through the H. Canyon Processing Facility. And that means more nuclear and chemical waste goes into the old tanks. NNSA collects nuclear weapons materials around the world, and most of it ends up coming through the H. Canyon and into the H. Tank Farm, where water and other materials used to clean out the lines to the tanks and the tanks themselves keep adding to the tens of millions of gallons of highly contaminated waste. Until after 2030, uh, you're going to have a problem worrying about waste still in the tanks. After 2030, you're going to have a problem worried about getting the stuff out of the state of South Carolina off the surface of the earth.